Hello and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, all the good people of the tube. Hope you're today. Hope you're feeling grand and all as well in your world. Hello there, everybody. Um, I've just finished recording the uh, jam song, whatever you want to call this. I don't know what this is today. Um, on my Epiphony, uh, I I've, I haven't done an actual review on this guitar yet, and I'm in love with this guitar. I really, really love this guitar. Um, and that was always the case. Because uh, obviously when I bought this guitar, I thought it was a real Epiphone. And then I found out through other people that it was actually a fake Epiphone. And I did a video on how kind of humbling that experience was to kind of like, you know, to, to be kind of like fooled. But at the same time, it proves one thing. A good guitar is a good guitar regardless of what it is. This isn't a real Epiphone. It's an Epiphony, as you can see. I've scraped in the Y. Uh, the pickups, I don't know what they are. They're definitely not Epiphone. They're, they're microphonic. They feed back. Um, it's wired in a really bizarre way. This guitar is the uh, the bridge. When the switch is down, it's the bridge pickup in the middle. It's both. Uh, it's them two pickups, and in the neck, it's them two pickups. So you never get the neck pickup on its own. You never get the middle pickup on its own. So like I say, it's uh, down just to re just to reiterate, bridge. In the middle, it's both those, and then up, it's both of those, and that's really, really cool. It gives it a really unique voice, and the neck pickup on this guitar is like mud. It's really dark. I love that because it just gives a totally different sound. Yeah, the middle position when you've got both these pickups on, it's quite jangly and bright, and then the, the bridge pickup is just a snarling beast monster from you know Planet Zog. It's a beast. It really is. But I love this guitar. Like I say, and it does, it does, it proves that like you know it, it's a fake. Epiphone, you know, none, none of the F, none of the parts on this are real. Not even the Grovers. The Grovers are fake. They're fake Grovers, and it's just amazing. I love this guitar, and um, it's full of music. It's a very inspiring instrument. This one is. Uh, it really is, and it's built well as well. I mean, this thing isn't built bad or shoddily. You know, some time and effort has gone into making this thing, you know, work. The soldering's good. There are full-size pots in there. There's no issues with, you know, setup or, or, or anything like that. It, it just works. It just works. The machine heads are great. It, it's heavy. It feels like a Les Paul Custom should. You know, the neck is great on it. It's a big, it's a fairly big neck, though. It's not a skinny neck. It's not like my uh, other Epiphone, my Epiphone um, standard. That, that's got a skinny neck. This one's actually quite a beefy neck, which is really nice. It's not massive. It's kind of like... Um, I don't know, not quite 59 spec neck, but it's really nice. Um, but yeah, it's really, really cool. Oh, I love this guitar. I say it's just full of music as well. I absolutely adore this thing. So people of the tube, I'm not here. So anyway, uh, there is a video on this, uh, like I say, of, uh, of when I got this, but I've never actually done a full review on it, which is crazy because this is an amazing guitar. But saying that, I didn't take it with me to France, which uh, was a mistake on my part because I loved it and I should have took it with me, but I didn't. But it's okay because I'm with it now. But anyway, I'm not talking any sense at my people with you. I do apologise. But like I say, like I say, this just proves again, I'm going to reiterate it again because I feel it's really important. A good guitar is a good guitar regardless of what it is. You know, regardless of what this is, this is an amazing guitar. And this is going nowhere. This is one of those guitars that I don't ever intend to sell. And if I do, something's gone wrong. You know what I mean? Or something's taking its place. But it'll take something special to take this one's place because it does something that my others don't. And I like that. And I love the fact it's free humbuckers. Uh, and all the gold hardware is kind of tarnished. Because it was obviously kind of like cheap hardware in the first place. So all the gold's just kind of like worn off. So it looks really used. And, well, it has been really used. It's been played a lot, this thing. I can tell it has. You can tell by the frets are really, uh, not low, low, but they, you know, I had to do a fret level on them. But everything works as you saw. Trust rod works, you know. The pots works. The switch works, you know. It's just a beast, absolute beast. Anyway, people of the tube, I hope you enjoyed the music this thing makes. This is the first video where I incorporate my Korg monologue. Everybody, uh, now this is a new thing for me, incorporating other instruments that aren't guitar into music, and I'm going to start doing it more and more because I really enjoyed what I could do with this today. So uh, you're gonna see you're gonna see and hear that in a minute. The downside to today's video was uh well apart from I had to fight for today's video. Today's video did not 
go together well. Everything just kept going wrong. But that's okay. You know, once in a while to struggle for a video is all good. But today's video was fraught with problems. There was problems with getting this right. There was uh, there was a major problem in the fact that the button that triggers my drum machine on my Zoom G 2.1 U pedal is now broken. So I can't activate the uh, the drums without using the tip of these scissors. So um, that was a bit frustrating, and you'll you'll see me kind of like fiddling around with that, and that was annoying because that that broke literally as I was about to record, and it just it just caused absolute chaos and havoc, and well not chaos and havoc, but it was an annoyance. Let's put it that way. You do over dramatize things, don't you, David? Yes, I like it actually. It's quite fun to over dramatize things. Like oh my god. Anyway. Like I say, people, I hope you enjoyed this guitar. Like I say, the things that, uh, just to reiterate quickly as well, the things that make this a fake, just so you know. Okay, so uh, number one is the serial number. I don't know how I'll be able to see that. Starts with an EE. -E, and I've been told, I don't know how true this one is, but the EE -E, uh, is a sign that it could be a fake. Could be a fake. Okay, another one is the Grover machine heads. The, the Grover lettering, which unfortunately I don't think you'll be able to see because it'll blur is wrong uh these pieces as well are too flat uh the grover ones are a bit more domed off here these are way too flat they feel a bit different and also on the top of the headstock these washers here uh i don't know how well you be able to see this but below the nut there's a washer and that washer is domed so it goes like like that up onto the uh you know say say the machine head post is there the washer goes like that, and the nut sits on top of this kind of domed washer. Epiphone don't use domed washers. So if you if your Epiphone Les Paul has domed washers, uh, it could be an iffy one. Also, the machine heads are far too close together, and the headstock is too long. I do apologise about the window glare, but uh, hopefully there you go. But as you see, the, the headstock's massively long, and the machine heads are so close together. Uh, I do apologise about my phone. But yeah, and also the truss rod cover is not cut right either. It's a bit dodgy. Um, another thing to note, like I say, is, is the hardware. It's kind of like tarnished in a very, very strange way. I need to kind of get this in the light. I don't know how well you're able to see that. Uh, another way of spotting it as well, uh, the select switch is in quite a different place. It's not quite in the right place. Uh, I don't know how well you're able to see that. It's, that. That's really hard to tell, to be fair with you. That, uh, that one. Um... And the final thing I can think of off the top of my head at this point... Oh, yeah, and the scratch plate as well. The scratch plate is a free-ply scratch plate, but it's very, very rough and ready. Uh, and the final thing that gives this away as being a fake Epiphone is the bridge studs here uh, on the tailpiece. They're domed over as well, and they shouldn't be domed over. So these bolts here are like that when they should be flat. So Epiphone are flat, the fake Epiphones, the Epiphonies are um, are domed. Anyway, people of the tube, I'm going to get off because I'm out of my mind. And I slept in a weird position last night, so my neck hurts. Anyway, but yeah, I don't know what wood this thing is. I don't care. I don't know what the fretboard is. I don't care. It's a very light fingerboard. Uh, but it, it plays great, sounds great. I love it. And that's all that matters. And as I say, a good guitar is a good guitar, regardless of... Um, of what it is you know and this is just one of those examples it's amazing i absolutely love this guitar so much and um it just sounds monstrous it really does sound monstrous like i say it's built well as well you know what i mean it's not built bad anyway i'm waffling and i'm repeating myself so i'm gonna get off i'm spaced out to the max i am in proper space today it's great anyway i'll see you again everybody have a great morning afternoon good evening and goodbye now and goodbye from me and goodbye from me Epiphony. Goodbye now. Thank you.